you know, actually, I'm very proud of the sisters, what they are doing, their love of Quran, their teaching of Quran, and uh, like Dr. Rania, mashallah, so look, look at this beautiful majlis, mashallah. So I'm very proud of what they, they are doing in the Bay Area, mashallah. Of course, those are the students of uh, Imam Zaid and Sheikh Hamza. So they grew up with Imam Shahid and Sheikh Hamza. Now they are their alimat, mashallah. They are scholars. They are teaching. This is, makes me very, very happy. And there are more scholars in here this year. They've been, we're doing actually, I, I feel like they are doing better than men, actually, alhamdulillah. So uh, we want to see more of that. We want to see more ladies memorizing Quran, reciting Quran, teaching Quran, inshallah. So, uh, and we have more like Sheikh Hamza and Imam Zaid and Dr. Rania and the others, inshallah. So uh, this year, one of the sisters, you know, during the pandemic, everyone chose to stay home or do something. She decided to recite the Quran for me. And she recited the whole entire Quran during the two years, almost. In Hafs, the Quran, she recited it in Hafs and Asim. And uh, she's been calling me every Saturday for some times, reciting for me until she, mashallah, recited the whole Quran. She got to Surat Al-Falaq, al Surat Al-Ikhlas. So I asked her to stop. Don't finish the Quran until I choose good place and time for you. By the way, she doesn't know. It's a surprise for her. <laughs> so if she knows, she, I don't think she's going to come here. But I, I want every uh, sister to know that everyone can do it. So now it's Ramadan. By next Ramadan, probably I want few sisters to do the same thing. Huh? To recite Quran, not even with me. I don't have a lot of time, but we have many other people who have ijazah in Quran. They can, few sisters, they can go the, the whole Quran reciting from Surat, uh, Surat Al-Fatiha all the way down. So learning every time, this is Ghunna, this is Qalqala, this is Mad, what a special, this sister, this is exactly what she is doing. In the beginning, she was making some sticks. I said, if I tell you, you missed something, you should be able to know what you missed and tell me the name of it. Alhamdulillah, in the end, if... She can still make some small mistakes, but if I told you miss this, she will go back to it right the one she corrected. That level is the level, this good level of Quran. At least you know what, the, if I say you missed the ghunna, you don't say, oh, I never heard about the ghunna. What is ghunna? Is it ghina? No, it's not ghina. It's something else. It's the role of Tijwil. So if we love the Quran, uh, the Quran is the, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is the highest thing we have in this world. Quran, Kitab Allah. See the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we should, if we love Quran, we have to get in and recite it. So we don't immigrate the Quran. As the Quran said, وَقَالَ الرَّسُولُ يَا رَبِّ إِنَّ قَوْمِ اتَّخَذُوا هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ مَهْجُرًا So tonight I'm very happy uh, to have Sister Hussein Mujaddidi. MashaAllah. <laughs> so I want you to come here. Sister Hussein Mujaddidi. Uh, I want you to recite This is not showing off. I know you don't know about it. This is just, I want everyone to be encouraged and do this. I know she's, make, she's here doing her lessons, but alhamdulillah, she decided two years to, to recite the whole Quran on me. So I just want to honor her to, tonight with something small. And not only me, MCC is doing this, alhamdulillah. Please, we want you to recite the end of Quran and the Fatiha and five ayats of Al-Baqarah and make dua for all of us, inshallah. Dua at Khatm Al-Quran is mustajab. So we're listening to you, inshallah. I'm so sorry. I will. Jazakumullah khairan. Thank you. I had no idea that this was going to happen. Seriously, Fadwa, you're in trouble. Masada <laughs> Fadwa, I love you for the sake of Allah. But she got me to come here under totally different pretenses. I had no idea. Oh my God. Yeah, Allah, what an honor. Um, I'm so humbled. Qariyamar, you have no idea how much I um, 
I just feel so unworthy of the time that you have given me. May Allah increase you and reward you with everything you wish for in this life and the next. You are so beloved to our community. And I'm just so honored, Wallahi, that you took the time. I know how valuable your time is. And you were so generous, so generous. May Allah bless you. May Allah, I, um, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm very shaken right now, but inshallah, I want to get through this. I've been waiting for this moment for years. Qadi Amr, by the way, was counted as one of my first Quran teachers before I left for Southern California. I moved uh, in 2007 and I was studying with him. So my studies got completely disrupted and then I had children and I never finished a khatim. So he was so generous to finish with me. I also have to mention because there were so many people who've been a part of this journey with me. Sheikh Muhammad Ali Akubi, of course, I, uh, he's my first uh, teacher of Tajweed. Um, I have Qari Sabratullah uh, 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 Amin, who was my first teacher of Hifs. May Allah increase him and reward him. Um, uh, Nisreen. Ustad Nisreen Talibaga, she was also one of my first teachers. Uh, Ustada Suzanne Dinani, I count her among my teachers. Ustada Nihad, Mashal Khalid Nihad, I love you for the sake of Allah. You you were so patient with me. May Allah bless you. My beloved um, Uzma, uh, Ustada Uzma Hosseini, she, she's not, she's part of this community, but she's so busy. Mashal. So many people have been on, on this journey with me, and Qadi Amr is the one who took the time to just let me finish and I am so you have no idea how much I've been longing for this moment right now so I, the fact that it's happening thank you I asked him just yesterday the day before when we, will we finish the khatam and he didn't tell me it was going to be here in front of all of you but alhamdulillah okay bismillah from uh, ikhlas I'm so sorry can we close the door thank you أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل أعوذ برب الفلق من شر ما خلق ومن شر غاسق إذا وقب ومن شر النفاثات في الأقد ومن شر حاسد إذا حسد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل أعوذ برب الناس ملك الناس إله الناس من شر الوسواس الخناس الذي يوسوس في صدور الناس من الجنة والناس صدق الله العظيم إن شاء الله <تصفيق> بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ألف لام ذلك الكتاب لا ريب فيه هدى للمتقين الذين يؤمنون بالغيب ويقيمون الصلاة ومما رزقناهم ينفقون والذين يؤمنون بما أنزل إليك وما أنزل من قبلك وبالآخرة هم يوقنون 
أولئك على هدى من ربهم وأولئك هم المفلحون صدق الله العظيم Can I do that quietly? Ya Allah. Alhamdulillah. Ya Allah. Ya Allah. Please forgive us and please guide us, Ya Allah. We are completely lost without you, Ya Rabbil Alameen. We need you, Ya Allah. We need you. We need you. Ya Allah, please guide us to love your book. Put the love of the Qur'an in all of our hearts and in the hearts of our family and in the hearts of our children, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Let our tongues be moist with your remembrance and with the words from your book, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Ya Allah, please, for everyone who is a witness to this, please grant them forgiveness in these last 10 nights. We seek your forgiveness and protection from the fire, Ya Rabbil Alameen. We seek your mercy, Ya Rabbil Alameen. We ask that you please accept our fasts, our prayers, our Quran recitation, our dhikr, our charity, every good deed that we've done, every good deed that we wished we could have done, Ya Rabbil Alameen. We ask that you please accept our, our efforts and our intentions, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, please reward our amazing teachers who give us so much of their time. Qari Amr, please, Ya Allah, reward him with everything that he seeks in this life and the next and exceed his expectations, Ya Allah. Please, Ya Allah, reward Dr. Ranya. She gives and gives and gives and gives of her time. Ya Allah, please bless her. Please bless everyone at MCC, the leadership at MCC, all of the people behind the scenes who have made this incredible community for us to, so that we can come and enjoy these offerings day after day, night after di- night. Ya Allah, please reward them and their family. Ya Allah, for all the congregants who come, who partake in the prayers, who support in the iftar, the toy drives, the pantry, all of the efforts of MCC, Ya Allah, please reward them. For every soul who's here before you, Ya Allah, we ask that you please accept our, our tawbah, Ya Allah, for all of our mistakes that we've made. Many people here are coming with heavy hearts, burdened hearts from past misdeeds and mistakes. Ya Allah, forgive us. Protect us, Ya Allah. Do not take us to account. Ya Allah, we seek your mercy. We, we, seek, your, we, we seek your forgiveness, Ya Rabbil Alameen. And for all who are, uh, who, are, who are suffering with illness or any um, problems with their health, Ya Allah, please give them shifa. Ya Allah, please, for those who have problems in their marriages, Ya Allah, please bring sukun and and muadda and and rahmah to their marriages, Ya Allah. Guide uh, their their spouses and their children so that their homes are places of dhikr and your remembrance and your worship, Ya Allah. For all who are uh, who have uh, who are going through a, a divorce or or who are single and who are struggling, Ya Allah, please bring them ease, bring them ease, Ya Allah. This the, the whatever difficulties they have, facil- facilitate for them, Ya Allah. For anyone who has trouble with finances, with money and wealth, Ya Allah, please purify their wealth for them and give them an income that is halal, that you are pleased with them, inshallah, so that they may nourish their bodies and their families with a halal income so that they may worship you, Ya Allah. And for all everyone else, Ya Allah, who is struggling with anything that they're struggling with, please, Ya Allah, remove their burdens, make things easy for them, and grant them your rida in this life and the next, Ya Allah. Please forgive our loved ones who have passed on. And, um, and and please, Ya Allah, guide our children. Ya Allah, this, this world is increasingly becoming dark. Please, Ya Allah, shed, shine your light upon our children. Shine your light so that they only see with the guidance that you give them, Ya Allah, and they are protected from the evil forces around them, Ya Allah. And bless this community. Bless our ummah, Ya Allah. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Jazakumullah khairan. Please forgive me for going on. Thank you. Allahu Akbar. Alhamdulillah. Allahumma ja'al al-Qur'an al-Kareem rabi'a qulubina. ونور صدورنا وجلاء أحزاننا وذهاب همومنا وغممنا يا رب العالمين اللهم اجعلنا من أهل القرآن الذين هم أهلك وخاصتك واجعلنا من أهل الذكر واجعلنا لك الشاكرين ولك ذاكرين ولك أوابين وإليك منيبين يا رب العالمين نسألك قلبا خاشعا 
ونسألك علما نافعا ونسألك عملا صالحا ونسألك ذكرا رافعا يا رب العالمين ونسألك الغنى عن الناس يا رب العالمين اللهم نور قلوبنا بالقرآن الكريم يا أرحم الراحمين علم أولادنا وبناتنا ونساءنا ورجالنا القرآن الكريم وارزقنا حبك وحب من يحبك وحب حبيبنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وحب القرآن الكريم وحب الصالحين من عبادك يا رب العالمين آمين آمين وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين I will suggest few sisters to do the same thing start Quran this Ramadan have a list sign up inshallah next Ramadan you come to us in here to Dr. Rania or to me or Orton, Sister Jose I give her permission to teach now as you see her Tajweed is beautiful her pronunciation is beautiful we are not here Tajweed is not a voice don't say I don't have good voice. Never say that. Tajweed, as Dr. Rania know, is not a voice. Is rolls of Tajweed, rolls of Qur'ans. They've been set up from Jibril to Prophet Muhammad to the Sahaba. So young girls in here, if you're not reciting Qur'an fluently, slowly, maybe you never recited the whole Qur'an. You stood in the beginning and you recited a few surahs. said, I am, my Qur'an is not fluent. What's the solution? Solution is to get in and have intention of reciting Quran for learning. Learning is, you get more reward than just for worshiping. Because the knowledge is something, mashallah, noble. Something is, is high. So get in and recite the whole Quran. Start, you know, half an hour every day. When you recite the whole, the whole Quran, you're gonna be fluent. And also the Jewish you have to ask every time, ask what is this, what is this? Do some work, inshallah. And, and read the whole Quran by the next Ramadan with intention of learning, inshallah. Uh, consult with Dr. Rania, with Mashallah and the others. There is many other uh, sisters who have ijazah in Quran, inshallah. Uh, allow me to give something for, uh, for sister. Inshallah. This is for you. And this is the shahad. <laughs> so you may need to stand up, inshallah, and get it. Yes, oh my God. <laughs> Please forgive me, I take your time, Dr. Oh. Rania and the others. Oh. Thank you. Oh my gosh. I don't understand. I don't, surprises don't happen very often for me. Allah always reveals something and they get spoiled. This is the first time I think in my life I've ever been this shocked and surprised. I had no idea. Wallahi, not even a single idea inkling. I would have not have come here sitting first row. Thank you. Oh my God, my baby. Oh my God.
he knows. He knows where the. Mashallah. Oh my gosh. Yeah, Allah. I'm I'm so overwhelmed with so many feelings right now. As I was saying, Wallahi. Uh, first of all, Jazakallah khairan. I know, Mashallah. You you and Ustad Fado must have coordinated. I don't know how you did this. I am telling you. Ask my family. I do not get surprised. Like it doesn't happen. So I'm sitting here. As soon as Qadi Amr came and he started describing, I was like, Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. What do I do? If I run out of here, I'm going <laughs> to cause a scene. I just, uh, I don't know what to say other than Alhamdulillah wa shukurillah. I feel like I have been, um, my story with the Quran is, is, uh, I don't know where to begin, but I feel like Allah really, um, put me on a path where I had to prove my love for this, for his book, which I love his book, but I had to really work for this moment. Mashallah. Uh, when I first started uh, learning the Quran, I had a form of dyslexia with, the, with Arabic. I really struggled. I really struggled. I mixed letters up all the time and I thought I'm never going to read. I thought I'm never going to be able to read. I actually ended up memorizing a good portion uh, um, uh, from the first juz without any ability to read. And, uh, my teacher had no idea. He thought I could read, but I didn't know how to read. I just was, I have a, you know, for the oral, uh, like I, I could do it from listening. And then Alhamdulillah, Allah brought our beloved Sheikh Muhammad Ali Yaqubi to the Bay area. Um, and his wife, Allah Yarhamha Fariza. May Allah bless her. She, she saw that some of the women were teaching, but we didn't know Tajweed and she couldn't believe it because mashallah, those who've studied abroad know these are foundational sciences. You learn them early. You learn them as a, as children. You have a of, 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 and people, uh, you know, children who complete their Tajweed. So she was shocked that she had all these women teaching, but none of us took Tajweed. So may Allah bless her. She asked her husband who, you know, he's a giant of a sheikh, if he would be willing to teach a handful of us and he, he said yes. So um, at that time in my life, personally, I was going through a lot. I was in a previous marriage and, um, and that person, he, he did not let me go and study. He prevented me from studying my deen. He actually forbade me to go and study. But alhamdulillah, this is the benefit of knowing your rights in Islam, because I knew that if he forbade me from the book of Allah, I don't have to obey him. So I did not obey him. I, in fact, did the opposite. And I, um, I studied with uh, Sheikh Muhammad for one month it took. And so I, I share this because I want to give all of you hope. It took one month for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help me overcome my dyslexia, to help me go from really struggling with basic reading to fluency. I was able to actually read. And I credit the barakah of Sheikh Muhammad and the way that uh, the, the, the Syrians in particular, I'll give credit where it's due. The Syrians and, and the Moroccans actually, Qadi <laughs> he's going to be, able, no, all of them, everyone. But the Syrians have a system, I think, mashallah, that just for me anyway, it was just solid. Um, but one month I was able to read with fluency. And alhamdulillah, he did actually allow me to teach because we went through all of the rules. But he said, you have to do a completion of the khatam. You have to, to get the written ijaza and be part of the sanad. You have to do a completion of the khatam, but you can teach. So for years I taught without having this. <laughs> I've been <laughs> dying to get this, but, you know, children and life and you can't, um, to find someone to read consistently with is difficult because things move and people are busy. So alhamdulillah, may Allah bless Qadi Amr because I studied with him. And when I came back to the Bay Area, I asked him, um, you know, if he could teach. So I took some of his Tajweed classes. By the way, if you have not taken Tajweed, please, he teaches here Saturdays, or he did before COVID. Those are probably one of some of the best classes I've ever taken. Qadi Amr is a phenomenal teacher. He's an amazing teacher. He knows how to teach the Quran beautifully, very effective, but he's also hilarious. So it's like comedy hour, eight o'clock in the morning. Um, I'm not kidding. I swear there were times where I had to leave because I was cracking up. I was like, this is, I, we're studying Quran, but he's got these quips and like really witty comment. Oh yeah. Oh, oh, he's hilarious. Like if you make a mistake, he just, he just has really funny things. I'm like, Hadi Amr, I'm, we're supposed to be serious, but I love those classes. I love those. So come to his classes of his teaching. Um, and then alhamdulillah COVID happened and I reached out first to Khaled. Mashallah, may Allah bless you because please. Mm -hmm. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
I have to credit you. She, I mean, my, um, I, I was going to the teacher. She's the one who put, you know, who made her time available to me as, uh, as busy as you are, Khaled. You made, you made it so easy to, to join you in, in this love uh, affair together. We were, we were just, mashallah, going over verses and Khaled, her recitation, we all know it's so beautiful. I just wanted to really listen to you and come, any excuse to come and learn from you and listen to you, but your love for the Quran is so contagious, so it just made me yearn for it. But then subhanAllah, COVID happened, I think you, you went to travel. So when that happened and you were gone, I needed to finish the project that I started. So that's when Qadi Amr, may Allah bless him, I turned to him and said, I just need to do a khatam, please can you read with me can you listen to me and he was so generous with his time allowed me every weekend um saturday morning i read with him and then some days on mondays and thursdays he would read with me too i was very um just excited to finally get you know through uh through through a good portion of it and then my goal was finish before Ramadan, but he, he, we finished Alhamdulillah before Ramadan. And I, I'm thinking like, <laughs> I think it was Shabbat. He, and I said, okay, can I get my Ijaz? Like, can we finish? And he's like, what are you rushing for? <laughs> and he was like, no. And he had, mashallah, the intention of, make, of making me wait for this moment. He wanted me to do my khatam in the month of the Quran. And I didn't even think of that because I was so impatient. But I, I have to credit him because he's, he, he's just an amazing teacher, an amazing human being. May Allah increase him and bless him. So Alhamdulillah, thank you for being a part of this i've had no idea i would have to i would be here sharing all of this with all of you but uh, the fact that allah brought us all together and that you were witness to this moment i will cherish this wallahi forever i was just telling dr rania this is probably one of the most important or exciting nights of my life wallahi i don't say that with any uh, exaggeration um, my children are here <laughs> their births yes uh, my wedding yes but this uh, really like the, the, the years that it took to get here. Alhamdulillah. So if I can do it, anybody can do it. Uh, so please inshallah, take inspiration and there are beautiful teachers of Quran in our community. Take advantage, uh, inshallah and uh, may Allah really connect our hearts to the Quran. This is, this is it for me. Um, I, I, the more I age, I just, and you can ask my, my kids too. How, how often do we have the Quran on the smile at the house? <laughs> the Quran is on always. We're 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 we've now, Alhamdulillah, gotten to the point where that we're just going to be a house of Quran, and I wouldn't have it any other way. I just I want to hear it all the time. I want to listen to it. I want to read it. I want to read its meanings because you find the more you, it's an ocean. The more you you go, you find all the jewels right of the Quran, and it just your heart just flourishes. And that's why when you see someone like Khala recite, you you hear the love in her voice. That is from love. That is genuine love. Um, so may Allah increase all of us in the love of, of the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wallahi. Jazakum al I'm so sorry. I feel like I've taken way too much of tonight's uh, program. This is special. Thank you, Thank you, please. <laughs> My dear sisters, I want you to all make an intention right now that Allah make you a person who one day will receive ijazah in Quran to. Say, Allahumma ameen. This is Ramadan. It's an odd night. Allah is listening to dua. There is no ask of Allah that's too big for him. Or anything that's too small for him. So don't say, oh, it can't, it can't be me. It will be you, inshallah ta'ala, as we see here, alhamdulillah. So please take this moment of inspiration to be inspired and empowered, inshallah. And one thing I have to say, <laughs> inshallah, there's a lot of excitement here. One thing I have to say, mashallah, from what we saw over and over and over again from all of our teachers, when you hear their stories, and it's very fun, actually, to ask the teachers, what is your story? How did you get to this point? What happened? You will be amazed how every single time there is usually a story of hardship. 
there is usually some sort of struggles or difficulty. In fact, a lot of the, I'm not, not to go into too much research, but I just wanna say this quick point. Some of the research that we know about psychology is that when people say such and such got to such a great place and people will say, despite their hardships, You've heard this, right? People will say, despite the difficult things, look how much they accomplished. Whether it's an athlete or whether it's somebody high up in leadership or whether it's somebody in tech or so on and so forth. Actually, it's not despite their hardships, it's in spite of their hardships. It's because of the hardships that you get to these points. Reframe it. Cognitive reframing of how you think about these things, subhanAllah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that he teaches us that if we have hardships in the beginning of the path, it's a sign of success. So if you feel like you've been having hardships, connecting with the Quran, reading the Quran, finishing your khatam of the Quran, finding a teacher, when the teacher starts, the teacher ends, the teacher starts, <laughs> there's so many stories about how people have struggled with this, right? Or you feel like your accent or the way you pronounce it or how it's, or you just don't feel very connected or motivated. There's so many reasons, but all of these are potential hardships that will get you to where you need to go, inshallah, with a sincere intention, because all you have to do is make that intention and suddenly Allah opens the doors. Wallahi, he opens the doors. One time I said this to, I'll just say this really quickly and then we'll go to prayer inshallah. One time I said this to, it was a class of little kids. And I said, make your dua and then Allah will open the doors. <laughs> Can you imagine what the little kids said? <laughs> they were like, like it'll just open? <laughs> it was very literal, you know, in their heads, like very black and white, very literal. <laughs> and I thought, oh, okay, maybe I need to explain it differently to kids. But for, for us as adults, I hope you understand that as the Hadith al-Qudsi, which is a Hadith that the Prophet وسلم, says from the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that if you take this first step, what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do? He comes walking. And if you walk, what does he do? He comes running. And if you run, <laughs> what happens? Right? If you go quickly, he comes at immense speed. So it's really a matter of us taking that first step and that first sincere step. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from the people of the Quran in the month of the Quran and make us from people not only who can read the Quran, but actually implement what it says. We don't want to be people who can read a cover to cover, but yani, our actual um, insides and our actions that pour out of it don't reflect the Qur'an. We want to be people who know the Qur'an and do upon the Qur'an. Allahumma ameen. Thank you so much, Ustaz Hosai. What a blessed night for the Rahma Foundation and for all your sisters here. Alhamdulillah. When our teacher is being honored, in addition to also being a teacher, <laughs> inshallah, what a blessed night this is. Alhamdulillah. May Allah bless you all. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. All right, my dear sisters.